Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for May 18th, 2023. I'm teaching a series on the miracles of Jesus. Actually, this is like part 82 or 83 of that, right? I've been teaching this since January 2nd, and I'm pretty much done. I'm done. I, I taught all the miracles, and the last one, the miracle of Lazarus, uh, it's taken me well over a month to deal with that one. So now that I'm done with that, I'm providing you a recap. And this is part six of the recap. You say, Rick, why do you take so much time with this stuff? Well, first of all, there's levels and levels of revelation in the word of God. And then second of all, there's just so much that we can glean from it, right? And so we're going to go back to this miracle of Lazarus. We're going to meditate on it again today. God has given me two major points with a bunch of sub points. And all of this stuff that God has given me is going to be a blessing to you. It will empower you to prosper today today and every day. Why? Because there are messages in the miracles. Put that in the chat. There are messages in the miracles. As we've been studying the miracles of Jesus, it will elevate our perspective and our understanding to believe God on another level. Why? Because God can do all things. So I want you to open up your heart to get ready to receive what God is about to deposit and impart into your life. right. There are messages in the miracles. Let's get ready for the word of God this morning. There's a scripture that we've been looking at all year that at our church we're meditating on. And you know me, I'm going to keep putting this through your ear gates to get it down in your heart. This is what the Bible says. Psalms 126 and verse four. Now, Lord, do it again. Say, Lord, do it again. Restore us to the former glory. May streams of your refreshing flow over us until dry hearts are drenched again. I want you to picture a stream, a stream that is flowing. And so there's like a river of miracles. Think about it that way. The stream that is flowing and, and streams in that stream, there is refreshing. There is a divine refreshing and restoring and it's flowing over us until every dry heart or every dry area in your heart is drenched again. I'm not talking about dibbled and dabbled. I'm talking about drenched, fresh fire, fresh wind, fresh anointing. Say amen to that. Say, Lord, I receive it. Put that in the chat. Lord, do it again. All right. So John chapter 11, we have pretty much covered this miracle already. We've covered it a few times over. But what does this mean for you today? I have two more things to share with you. I'm praying about whether or not this is the last thing I'll say about John chapter 11. This might be it. You know, this is part six of the recap. And it took me over a month to go through it. So anyway, this might be it. I'm not sure. We'll see you tomorrow. Two things to share with you in this morning. As I get into these two things, I want you to open up your heart to get ready to receive. Number one, God's power is unmatchable. Put this in the chat. God's power is unmatchable. If God is for you, he is more than the whole wide world against you. God's power is unmatchable. When you know that God's unmatchable power is on you, in you, with you, and for you, it does something for your confidence. Listen, I'm not the biggest dude in the world, right? I'm barely 5'7". When I was a little kid, I was a lot smaller than that. And on, on New Jersey Avenue and Sutter Avenue in East New York, Brooklyn, on that corner of New Jersey and Sutter, where we all had hung out, that's where we played tag. That's where we played skelly. That's where we played Chinese handball. That's all of that stuff. On that corner, New Jersey and Sutter, uh, uh, they called me Little Lenny. That's another story for another day. But I had a friend. His name was Kenny. I was like, you know, a little kid. I was maybe like five foot tall. And I had a friend, Kenny, that was like six, four. And Kenny was huge. And the thing about little Lenny, me, is that little Lenny had a lot of confidence when Big Kenny was around. So Kenny used to come to my house because he likes my mom's, he used to like my mom's uh, rice and beans. And I had an Atari. And so he would come to my house and and uh, he was way older than me, but he hung out with me all the time. We played Atari in my house. But when I was outside and I was a little kid and I had this big kid next to me, little Lenny had a lot of confidence when Big Kenny was around right? Because Big Kenny protected Little Lenny. What I'm saying is God's power is unmatchable. When you know that God is on you, in you, with you, and for you, it does something for your confidence. This is what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 28 from the New International Version. And we know that, that in all things, God works for the good of those that love him. Put this in the chat. All things are working for my good. I know that in anything, listen, some of us are facing significant challenges or things that happen that we didn't want to happen. But we know this. This is what the Bible says. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him, 
who have been called according to his purpose. Verse 29, for those God foreknew, for whom he did foreknow, then did he also predestinate to be conformed unto the image of his son, that Jesus might be the firstborn amongst many brothers and sisters. When Jesus was in the earth, he was only one. But once he died, he said, it's like, unless a kernel of corn goes into the ground and dies, it remains yet alone. But if it goes down into the ground and dies, it becomes a seed and it reproduces. So Jesus, when he was on the earth, he was the firstborn and the only begotten of the father. But when he died and went down into the earth, boom, it reproduced. And now all of us, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. So he is the firstborn of many, many, many brothers and sisters. You and I are just like Jesus. Verse 30, for those who he did predestinate, them did he also call. And those whom he called, them he also justified and them uh, that he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? Watch this. If God is for us, he is more than the entire world against us. If God is for us, then he is more than everybody and anything against us. Listen, God is for us. And so this is level of confidence that you have when God is for us. Talk to me, Rick. Give me some points from this. Here we go. You ready? When we reach our limit, and we remember that God is for us and we're in God and God is, is in us and I'm in Jesus and Jesus is in me and I'm in the kingdom and the kingdom is in me. Then when I reach my limit, that's where God begins. Where I, where my strength runs out, that's where God's power can kick in. So when we are too weak, when we can't do it, when we're like, oh God, I can't go any further. That's where the grace of God, the power of God kicks in. There is no situation that is too hopeless. There's no power that, that, that is bigger than God's power. There's no problem that is too big. There's no disease that is too severe. There, there's no dream that's too high for God. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. Say amen to that. Now, as a result of that, because God is for us and God can do anything, then watch this. Put this in the chat. Then limitations are launch pads. Oh, yes. Limitations. So whatever my limitations are, it can become a launch pad. The, my limitations are the jumping off point for the power of God. Limitations are launch pads where God can reveal his glory. Where I can't, he can. Where, where I run out, he kicks in. And so where I am limited, watch this, every setback, every challenge, every seemingly impossible situation is a limitation for a launch pad. It is where a jumping off point for the glory of God, the power of God. We can look unto him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So we have to learn. We got to get to the point where we trust in God's power. And we also have to understand, like I taught you yesterday, that his ways are above our ways, his thoughts are above our thoughts. So sometimes God is moving when we don't understand that he's moving. We don't even understand what he's doing, but his ways are higher. And, and because his ways are higher and his thoughts are deeper, that he may not move the way we want. We may not understand it, but we have to believe God. We have to believe that we will see the glory of God manifested in our lives, even when we don't understand it, even when his actions or his ways defy our understanding. Listen, God... God invites us to go to another level of wisdom so we can see things from God's point of view. But we got to be committed to never giving up, not blaming God. When something bad happens, we, we, we got to be careful. If you start blaming God and pointing your finger at God, then you're not going to be able to hear from God. We have, we have to be open to God, even in painful situations, so that we can experience his power, so that he can manifest his unmatchable power, his strength and his sovereignty in our lives. And I pray that as I've been teaching you this series on the miracles of Jesus, and as we've pretty much gone through every miracle at this point, I pray that over the last few months, from January 2nd to now, your faith has been reignited and restirred and refreshed and restored to the point where you can believe that God can do anything. The word impossible does not exist for God. It should not exist for you. There's no dream too big. There's no challenge too hard. There's no situation too hopeless. For God to handle. Listen, God's power can go beyond our limitations. So simply put, God makes the impossible possible. Put in the chat, the impossible is possible for me, but you got to believe. Here's another thing you got to believe. I just wrote, read for you Romans chapter eight, that all things are working together for my good. So that means that God is moving even when you don't see him moving. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus didn't understand what Jesus was doing, especially when he waited. Lazarus died. He went into the tomb. Mary and Martha were freaking out. They thought Jesus wasn't moving, but God was moving 
even when they didn't think he was moving. Listen, even when you can't see God moving, God is moving. Even when you don't understand God's plans, God's plans are in operation. Even when you don't know what God is doing, God is moving pieces around on the chessboard of your life. You may not understand it. They didn't understand it, but we got to believe that all things are working together for my good. Even when I don't know why this happened or why it happened this way or how it's going to happen at the end of the day, all I know is going to be good. It's going to work out for my good. I got to keep my heart open to God's power and his glory. In the end, God was glorified through the situation with Lazarus. Now it was painful. It was difficult. It was challenging. They mourned, they cried, they wept. All of that is true. But in the end, God was glorified. You got to believe that in the end, all of this thing is going to work out for my good. All Say that, put that in the chat. All things are working for my good. All things are working for my good. That's That needs to be your confession. You got to believe that every day. And you got to know this, every demonstration of God's power is a manifestation of his glory. Let me say that again. Every demonstration of God's power is also a manifestation of his glory. Why is that important? Let me explain. You know, look at me for a minute. You're on this planet to glorify God. You know that, right? Okay. So if you're on this planet to bring glory to his name, then one of the ways that God is glorified in your life is when you face a situation that's bigger than you, that's very challenging, maybe a situation that takes you to your breaking point, right? I know I know we don't like to talk about this stuff, but I'm just telling you, this is that we see biblical evidence of this. And when we get in a situation where basically we're at the brink of our breaking point, and God will never allow us to face something that we cannot, ha- cannot handle, so he's already given us the grace for it. But when you're at the brink of what you think is your breaking point, And God's power then is manifested in that situation. Every manifestation of God's power is also a manifestation of his glory. So because God did something that was the greatest miracle ever in Jesus's ministry through the the family of Lazarus, then the manifestation of glory was the greatest manifestation of glory, greater than every other miracle. So for God to be glorified in your life, here's the truth. I, I, I would rather not admit this, but it's true sometimes, like you can't have a testimony without a test, right? You you can't have the spirit of an overcomer if you don't have anything to come over. So sometimes these circumstances and situations that God allows position us to experience God's power like never before. And it is the manifestation of God's power that also brings the manifestation of God's glory. So if you want God to be glorified, right? And you sing, be glorified, you know, Lord, be glorified in the heaven, be glorified in the earth, be glorified in this temple in me, be glorified through me. Well, watch this. Jesus can't be glorified through you if you don't, if, if you don't face anything. Get, Jesus can't be glorified through you if you never, if you never go through a circumstance or a situation where the manifestation of his power is required. And so you can't know God as a healer if you're never sick. You can't know God as a provider if you never need anything. You can't know God like this, like on that level, for if you never are in the situation where you need the manifestation of his power. So the manifestation of his power is also the manifestation of his glory. So when you say, Lord, I want you to be glorified through me, you're also saying, Lord, I am willing to go through whatever I have to go through in order for your glory to be manifested in my life. I am willing to experience you on a level that, that listen, Lazarus had to die. Mary and Martha had to cry. Listen, I am willing to go through whatever I need to go through on the path to my destiny. I'm not asking for it. I'm not welcoming it. I'm not, I'm not saying God put me through stuff. No, that's not what I'm doing. I'm not calling it all my life. But, but, but for you to manifest your glory, your unmatchable power in my life on whatever way, whatever level that you want to do it, I'm open to it. And so I pray that this series on the miracles has settled in your heart that God can do anything. So when you are going through a circumstance or a situation, when you do need God to do something incredible in your life, when you do need God to do something that's bigger than you, remember his strength is made perfect in your weakness. So when you are face to face, with what the world says is impossible, that's where the power of God comes. When you are face to face with a church, a challenge or circumstance or situation that you can't do, you can't handle, you don't have the money for it, you don't have the wisdom for it, you don't have the connections for it, you are face to face with what you think is impossible. That's a perfect opportunity for the power of God to be manifested in your life. And the manifestation of his power is also a manifestation of his glory. Say amen to that. You got it? You got it? All right. That was number one. I only have two points for you this morning. And then we'll close. Here's number two. You ready for number two? 
Jesus transforms our endings into beginnings. Man, when I wrote this down, I had to high five myself. Look, we serve a God that can turn an ending into a beginning. We serve a God that can take something that looks like it's the end of a thing, and God says, no, I'm about to uh, yeah, take what it looks like is the end of a thing and start a new thing in your life. I'm talking about a new season. I, I'm talking about a God that says, okay, well, Oh yeah, maybe that is the end of one thing, but now I'm going to take you to another level. I'm going to take you to another dimension, right? So, so for Lazarus, the tomb was like the end of one part of his life, but it was the beginning of another part of his life. Can you imagine what, what life was like for Lazarus after the resurrection? Can you imagine for the rest of his life, he was known as the guy who was resurrected from the dead. For the rest of his life, he was known as the guy who had been dead for four days. For the rest of his life, I mean, like, like he couldn't go nowhere where people be like, oh, yeah, that's him. And like, he'll go to a restaurant and they're like, oh, did you see? It? Yeah, that's the man. That's the man. For the rest of his life. Yeah, and one ending is just the beginning of a new season of something new in your life. That's what God will do. This is a reminder that when you go through something significant, watch this, is not the end. It is just the beginning of something new. God wants to do something new in your life. You got to open up your heart to something new. Say amen to that. We serve a God that can take you from death to life. We serve a God that gives life to the dead. We serve a God that speaks life and breathes life into dead situations. So if you are facing something that seems dead, God can give life to it and start something all over. Say, Lord, do it again. Say, Lord, give me something new. Say amen to that. We serve a God, watch this. Jesus can take us from mourning to dancing. Ooh, glory to God. Some of us need to hear this right now. Listen to me. The Bible says in Psalms 30 and 1 that God can take our mourning and turn it into dancing. He can watch this. He can heal us. He can give us the oil of joy. And so God, Jesus can take us. He took them. He took them, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha from mourning into, can you imagine when Jesus, when, when Lazarus popped up and he said, loose that man and let him go. And they took all the grave clothes. Can you imagine the glory of God that was manifested? The praise that, that went out. Oh my God, God can turn your mourning into dancing. He can take something that looks like an ending and make it a beginning for something new. Jesus can take us from sorrow to strength. Put this in the chat. Lord, you take me from sorrow to strength. Jesus, in one moment, Oh, sorrow. In the next moment, I'm, I'm strengthened. I'm empowered. I'm refreshed. I'm renewed. I'm restored. BCMI, come on. I'm talking to you. We need this right now. Yeah, he, God can take us from sorrow. I feel the I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Oh, glory. I felt the power of God just come on me. God can take us from sorrow to strength. Many of us, we're, 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 we just lost one of our sisters. So, so there's a level of sorrow. But watch this. God can take us. Even now, I feel the strength of God, the grace of God, the peace of God, the anointing of God. I, I release it over you in, in Jesus' name. God can take us from sorrow to strength. God can take us from fear to faith. You should not be afraid. Even in the moment where, where, where fear feels like it's overtaking you, even now, God can shift you from fear into faith. God can take us from ashes to beauty. Come on, this is Isaiah 61 and verse 3. For, for, for ashes, God will give you beauty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the Bible says, watch this, the ashes of failure can be turned of disappointment and loss can be turned around into beauty. God, the Bible says God gave them beauty for ashes. God replaced their mourning with the oil of joy and God can do it for you. We serve a God. Listen, this is what he did for Mary and Martha and Lazarus. He turned it around. He gave them beauty for ashes. He gave them the oil of joy for their mourning. In this moment, even right now, may the oil of joy flow down into your heart. May you be refreshed and restored and renewed and revived. God can take us from pain to purpose. Like in the middle of their pain, when he, when Lazarus was raised from the dead, then they had a brand new purpose. Can you imagine that family? That family had to be able to believe God for anything. If, if, if they saw with their own eyes Lazarus pop up from the dead after being dead for four days and his body was already stinking, then they operated with another level of purpose and focus and favor and fervor and praise for the rest of their lives. God can take you from pain to purpose, from fear to faith. God can turn it around. He can take you from sorrow to strength. Listen, Jesus can take us from defeat to victory. It looked like once the, the tomb was sealed, it looked like it was final. But I've told you in this series many times, it's not final till God says it's final. It's not over till God says it's over. 
God can turn any seemingly hopeless situation around, any seemingly dead situation around. Any God could take any seeming defeat and turn it around into a victory. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57, thanks be unto God who always gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you even now for always giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You could take a defeat and turn it around into victory. Father, you give us the victory. Father, you are the God of victory. We, we experience your victory in, on every level. We experience your victory in every circumstance, in every situation. No weapon formed against us. This is not in my notes. No weapon formed against us and shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, you shall condemn and we shall condemn for this is the inheritance that we have in you. A thousand can fall at our side, 10,000 at our right hand. It's not going to come nigh us. And so Father, if something looks like no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So if something looks like it's prospering, then the weapon is not against us. If something looks like it's not working out, it's because it is going to work out. We just don't understand it yet. And so Father, we're looking unto you. Yeah, even when th things look difficult, even when a door closes, another door is going to open for us in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you are the God who's moving things around. Your power is unmatchable. Your strength is immeasurable. Your love is unyielding towards us. Father, we love you. We give you glory. Thank you for this series on the miracles. Thank you, Father, for every miracle. Thank you, Father, for bu building us up. Yes, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Thank you, Father, for building our faith up in this season. Even now, Father, we declare in the name of Jesus that we are looking unto you as the author and the finisher of our faith, that we are not moved by circumstances or situations, that we are not moved by what we see, that we, we meditate and we medicate on your word day and night, that we are steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain in you. Father, I lift up every person. This is not part of today's word. <laughs> I lift up every person that's on this call. I set my faith in agreement with them that they would look unto you, that their eyes would be fixed and focused on you, that they would not move from what you said to them, neither to the left nor to the right, that they would that they would walk out your purpose, that, that they would overcome obstacles and circumstances and situations and challenges, that they would look past the problem and focus on the promise, that they would see around the other side of the storm and see what's waiting for them on the other side. We declare, Father, blessings, advancement, acceleration increase in every area of their lives in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. I don't know. That was God. So listen, I, uh, that, that definitely was not part of my notes. So just embrace the power of God as I'm going to try to close. Even when it seems like it's the end, it could be a new beginning. I speak new beginnings over you with Jesus. The end of one thing is the beginning of something else. So get ready. Listen, when you get ready, get ready. I'm speaking new things over your life. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice. I felt that. Glory to God. I want you to lift up your voice and declare this over your life. Say, Father, this is a season of refreshing and restoring for me. I look unto you as the author and the finisher of my faith. Your power is unmatchable. If you are for me, then it doesn't matter if the whole world is against me. It's never over until you say it's over. Jesus can give life to the dead. Jesus can turn my mourning into dancing. He can turn my sorrow into strength. He can turn my fear into faith. He can turn my ashes into beauty. He can turn my pain into purpose. And he can turn any defeat into a victory. There is nothing you can't do. So with you, Father, every ending, is just the start of a new and glorious beginning. This is how I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith. Man, this is so good. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Tomorrow I'm gonna have another one. So please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting my notes, it would, it's crazy for you not to get my notes. I'll give it to you for free. Go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button, put in your email address there. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Yeah, th this word, I know I know a lot of people watch today's word. No, I know you are watching from all over the world and from all kinds of experiences. I got people that have known me all these years, but right now for our local church, this was, I believe this was a word for us and I receive it. And uh, I, I thank God for it. Listen, I love you. God loves you too. Leave me some comments in the chat. If this message was a blessing to you, share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Have an amazing day. Greater is coming for you. New beginnings.
is what we're speaking. I love you. God loves you more. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to know more about our ministry or you would like to partner with us in what we're doing in the Caribbean, being a blessing to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic, then please go to ripministries.org. You'll be able to find out more information there. And if you'd like to make a donation, all the donations are tax deductible in the United States. A few months ago, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to set up a coaching and mentorship program, and Isabella and I set that up. And so now we make ourselves available on three different levels for those that want access to us and to learn things about maximizing your potential, increasing your personal productivity, and fulfilling your life's purpose. If you're interested in that, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. And then lastly, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to write several books and journals to help people grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please go to rickpina.co if you don't have our material, and there's also apparel there as well. Listen, thank you for being a blessing to us. We pray that our ministry will continue to be a blessing to you.